It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, August 11th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is going to get to know what the Columbus Blue Jackets have been up to this offseason. I've been wondering. Yeah, we're going to talk to the guys over at Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets on today's show, plus discuss that make good trade with the Canes and our listener poll for this week, all coming up on the show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at our Miriam. I'm here with Russ Cohen who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We as a show are on Instagram and threads and blue sky at locked on flyers as well. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of locked on. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube or on the Sirius XM app. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you'll get the latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, I have to say, I have not laughed as mightily as I did in a very long time as when we got the notification from the Philadelphia Flyers about this trade with the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, sending us the rights to Massimo Rizzo and the Canes 2025 fifth round draft pick in exchange for the rights to uh, David Kasha, who, of course, the Flyers had let go back to Europe uh, a couple of years ago. and. Man, is this the make goodiest make good trade has to ever have traded? Yeah, I think it's one of those things where uh, Carolina probably knew that Rizzo wasn't going to sign with them, knew the Flyers had interest, went back to him and said, hey, what are you going to do with Kasha? He doesn't, clearly doesn't want to play for you guys. And then there's a deal to be made. I mean, you know, obviously Kasha is the biggest talent, but, you know, whether he could play a full season, stay healthy, all that stuff, that's – that's always up in the air with anybody with the last name Akasha. And then, you know, with Rizzo, it's like, hey, he he's a teammate of uh, Bobby Brink, so they're probably trying to right. get a little of that reignited. He has some offensive ability for sure. There's some skill there. He's an ugly skater. There's no question about that, and it really needs to be worked on. And, you know, if they can improve it somewhat, they might get a player out of it. Like, he's no, there's no doubt he's an AHL player. I can't tell you he's an NHL player until I see if there's skating improvement and, you know, and you get a pick and a fifth round pick is a fifth round pick. So that's fine. So I feel like considering Kasha was never going to play. Yeah, you did fine on this trade. I mean, I can't call it a home run or everybody's like, or people were like, yeah, they did great. It's a little early for that, but they did fine. Yeah. I mean, I loved uh, David Kasha back in the day. You know, I thought he was a real good prospect. He did have pretty strong potential, uh, but, you know, there was just like a missing link there and it yeah. makes sense for him to to go back home and, you know, wish him all, all the best of luck. And, you know, to give up the rights to a player that, you know, is never going to play for your team to get the opportunity to maybe have another guy who could turn into something. I, I think you do it. And obviously we know it was the remnants of the Tony D'Angelo deal that did not happen. Right. And it. It feels a lot like Carolina was just saying, yeah, we kind of hosed you there, so we're going to give you the player anyway, and we'll throw in the the fifth-round draft pick as a sweetener to say sorry. I mean, it wasn't uh, that benevolent because (laughs) Kasha does have talent. It's not that benevolent. No, it's true. But it's it's, Don Waddell is a pretty upstanding guy. I'll say that. Yeah, I I think, you know, it it was just funny at the time when it happened. Uh, and, and we'll see, you know, if they can sign Rizzo, Flyers can, can sign Rizzo and, and what that contract looks like. I'm sure they like. have an idea and, that he'll sign with them and uh, Brink will talk to him and I'm sure it'll all happen. Yeah, it's like, will Rizzo sign before Morgan Frost? We shall see. Oh, no, <laughs> that's still hanging out there. It is. It is. 
Uh, one more thing to get to in this episode before we join our friends over at Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets is our listener poll results for the week. Again, really fun results from you guys. Love this. We're going to obviously keep it going next week. Uh, this week's question was, who is the biggest lock to make the Flyers opening night roster? The options we gave you is Ronnie Adder, Tyson Forrester, Bobby Brink, Igor Zamula, and Sam Urson. And by like a runaway margin with 72%, uh, y'all said Tyson Forrester, which I think from a skills perspective is the absolute correct answer. I think that that he makes the most sense. He's had a lot of time with the Flyers already. Coach loves him. He fits in well into the lineup. Um, Could play second line, could play third line, I think, all season long. Um, I think there are reasons to pick the other guys, but I think Tyson Forster is the objective correct answer. Yeah, he's tantalizing because of that shot and he's big. And and so you look at that and you say, well, what might be? And so I I get it. That's what I thought when I drafted him. Same thing, same feelings. Yeah, so Sam Urson had the second highest percentage with 17%. And I think given the goaltender situation, which... Yeah, now he's a bigger player than he was last year. And there's a lot more pressure on him than last year, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we talked about it recently with with what the goaltending situation was going to be this upcoming season and, you know, and that very potential of him playing a a bigger role. So totally understand why people would have selected him. I think... Uh, looking at Agar Zamula, the 5% that selected him, I think did because of the roster rule situation where they don't think he could get through waivers. And so in order to protect him, the Flyers are going to 100% lock him into the Flyers opening night roster. And I think there's an argument to be made there. So why you would select him in a poll like this. But I think from a skills perspective, he's not the right answer. Sure. I agree with both things that you said. But yeah, they're not going to just give him away. Right. And then uh, Bobby Brink had 5%. I think that's about right, uh, just given that he, he really does need to spend more time in the AHL. And I think, I think they Adder- all know it. They all would like to see yeah. him in the NHL doing well, but I think they all know that, hey, it's not his time yet. Yeah. And of course, Ronnie Adderd, I think, is a solid call up option. Like, yes. put, put him at the top of that list in terms of potential call ups from the fans yeah. for defensemen. And uh, he finished out at 2%. Uh, Like I said, we'll have another poll next week, so stay tuned for that, and you'll be able to make your choice over on YouTube. In the meantime, coming up next, our crossover with the guys from Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets. We are going to get into some Blue Jackets and Flyers talk in just a second, but first, I want to tell all of you about FanDuel. As football season's about to kick off, FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you're going to get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you're going to get bonus bets for every time they win a game. You can use those on spreads, player props, over-unders, more. Baseball is still happening. Uh, Hockey season is going to be starting soon. Do you want to make bet on who's going to win the Stanley Cup? You can do that at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Start earning bonus bets today with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. So it's so great to have a Metro Division crossover episode with the guys from Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets. And I think kind of the biggest question that Flyers fans might have is now that you've had time to think about it and see where he might fit into the team, how are you feeling about the Ivan Provorov trade and where will he slot in? Yeah, I feel a lot better about the trade. I still don't love the trade necessarily. Um, but having kind of had some time to look at how the Blue Jackets defense is shaping up this season. And obviously we talked um, a couple of days after the trade and you kind of gave us a rundown of what kind of player he is, what kind of role he could play. Um, I do feel better about it. Um, I didn't like the trade. I didn't like giving up the first. Um, I don't necessarily think the Blue Jackets needed to pick up another defenseman when they already have so many, but it is what it is. Um, he's probably going to slot into that second line, uh, that second pairing, just behind Zach Wierenski, providing Zach Wierenski can stay healthy this season, I'm going to knock on wood. Um, but as of right now, it's looking like the Blue Jackets top four is going to be some kind of combination of Wierenski, Provorov, uh, Damon Severson, who they picked up from the New, New Jersey Devils, and then a fourth guy that is going to win his spot in camp. I personally would like that to be David Yerichek, but people are saying it's probably going to be uh, uh, Adam Boquist. 
or maybe Jake Bean. So that's kind of the, the top four for the Blue Jackets, which is immediately better than how they finished last season, uh, which I believe had Erica Branson and Andrew Peake as our top defense pairing. So it uh, he solidifies the defense in a way that uh, makes me feel a little more reassured. I think it's probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I, I'm just going to finish that all thought too and just say that I think you're a check uh, we'll really push those other two. Like I, I'm not counting them out. No, I I'm think sure not. you know based on the year he had last year in the AHL. So I think uh, while I like those other two, they don't have what Juracek has. So it depends. Just depends if he's ready. Uh, Zach Wierenski is 100 percent this year, Hayden. Like that. What does that do to the team as far as just overall? Uh, they were missing him badly last year. You got to think he helps the team a lot, and he's got to at least add up for some wins in the and for wins in the wins column. Yeah, he changes everything when he is in the lineup for the Blue Jackets. I've, uh, we already said in his season review, I think Jay was a little shocked when I first said it, but he is the best defenseman in Columbus Blue Jackets history. Like he has already surpassed uh, Tootin in the points race for that. So, and we have him for, you know, he's only, what is he, only 25? So like we, we got him, he's he's ours. And um, yeah, he, he changes everything when he's in the lineup. Unfortunately, he has had some injury issues over the last few years. And the second that he gets injured, the team instantly, like their play dips to a level that is just, it's not fun. So, yeah, he changes everything when he's in the lineup. He's hes gotten a lot better since um, Seth Jones left. I thought when Seth Jones departed from Columbus that the better defensemen left and that we were left behind with kind of the the partner in, in a sense. But, no, I really think that Zach Wierenski has stepped up and has been even a better player than what we had in Zach Wierenski. I think he has taken on a leadership role that's huge. Now, the, the biggest thing is he just needs to be on the ice because he's not helping us sitting up in a in a suite, you know? So as long as he's on the ice, the team is going to be competitive. Uh, they also have to figure out the rest of the lineup, obviously. He's he's not the only thing. But, um, yeah, he also just he, – he, I'd like him to play less minutes because I feel like the last couple of years the Blue Jackets relied on him so heavily – so getting Provorov, giving Severson and um, Blankenberg being a, a huge factor and uh, David Juracek coming up through the ranks, those guys are going to be huge helping keep Zach Wierenski off the ice and healthy. Um, but, yeah, he makes all the difference in the world when he's in the lineup. There's no question. I mean, just to, to, to follow up on that, I hate to tell you, but Mike Babcock kills number one defenseman in minutes. Can't so wait. he's going <laughs> to, you know, he, he's going to play just as much or if not more than he's ever played in his career, my guess. Can't wait. <laughs> so I think, you know, obviously new coach, right? And, you know, some new signings. Uh, how are you feeling about this offseason overall? Like aside from the draft, we'll get to that. But like aside from the draft, how do you think Columbus ha has done and have you taken a step forward? It's been such a weird off season, I think, because you you look at like what they've added and what they've lost. You know, if you look at outside of the draft, the only players that they've added really are Severson and Provorov, who are both fine second pairing defensemen, but are not really going to move the needle for this team in the way that I think the the that the, the, the Kalainen thinks they will necessarily. But then you look, and you know, we'll talk about the draft in a minute, I'm sure. But you look at who they picked up in the draft. You look at who they're getting back from injury. You know, Patrick Laine was missed half the season. Um, Zach Rensky missed, played 13 games. Jake Bean played 14 games. Like everyone was injured. Johnny Gaudreau was the only healthy player on this team, and he even he missed a couple of games. You know, so it's it's been a weird off season because I don't think they've done much. All they've kind of done is wait and get their guys healthy. And they made a couple of trades, which I feel, you know, we, we talked about the Provorov trade. I think that could have been better. I feel fine about the, the Severson trade. Um, the contract is a little long and a little pricey for my liking, but I that's what you pay for free agents. That's, that's what you pay for in free agency, and that's essentially what this was. So the draft is definitely like the gem of the offseason for me, but I don't think it was... It wasn't a great off season outside of the draft. It wasn't a terrible off season. It was very kind of, eh, eh, I feel fine about it. I mean, the thing about the um, the draft, Hayden, is that I was a little surprised Adam Fantilli signed, not because he told me he was going to go back to Michigan and everything. I understand things change. Uh, just 
I felt like the uh, Jackets put a full court press on them because they're sort of a little desperate to um, to show the fans what they have. And I'm not saying Fantilli's not up to the task. I, I think he is, but I think he'd be better if he waited a year. And I just uh, I was a little surprised that management didn't feel that way. Uh, and then again, I you know on our show we talked about Andrew Strathman a lot. It's a guy that I targeted early in the year and and so i like him too and you know just want to get your feeling about what you feel about fantilly what you think about strathman if he's like a value pick and anybody else that they drafted we could chat him for a minute yeah just speaking real quickly to fantilly i think blue jackets fans have had our eyes on him in a blue jackets uniform since like december and you know that we were in the race to get connor bedard we kind of knew that wasn't going to happen. I think deep down in our souls, we knew Gary Bettman was not going to let the Blue Jackets have the number one overall pick. It, we didn't even have the second overall pick. We thought we were getting Leo Carlson. Ducks made the decision that they made. Here's Adam Fantilli, the guy that we wanted kind of from the get-go. And I just feel like Adam's just wired differently. I feel like he wants to play in the NHL. Um, he was great in college last year. I, I'm an Ohio State fan, so I definitely don't want to see him in a Michigan uniform next year. But it wouldn't have been bad for him. You're absolutely right. One more year playing with a guy like Gavin Brindley, who we also drafted in the second round, would have been great. Yep. Um, and it would have been it, it would have been great for his development. But I think getting him in there right away, getting him NHL experience is going to be – huge for his career uh i just hope it works out better than it's worked out for some other guys so far like cole sillinger is another guy that the blue jackets organization threw in the fire right away and he kind of burned out fairly quickly now he's kind of having a resurgence but i don't think adam fantilly's a player that's going to burn out that quickly i think he's gonna his game's going to translate immediately so um yeah i was a little surprised to see him you know as you know, forward with it as the organization was, but I also love that at the same time. So I'm, I'm really happy that we're getting him and a guy like Strothman who we got, uh, I believe he played in Youngstown last year, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's awesome. I, I, I think he's going, he's not going to, he'll be back in Youngstown, I believe. Um, he's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm really excited about a guy like him as well. Yeah. The one thing I'll, I'll add on top of this at the combine, uh, it turns out that Brindley's taking like, you know, like, sports management classes and and i asked joking jokingly if he was going to be fantilly's agent one day and he said maybe you know because they're buddies and sure enough you know at the signing brent brinley's right there at fantilly's signing so it's like i you know i'm gonna just say it right here i think that's gonna happen someday Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we actually had um, yesterday's episode was uh, our interview with Gavin Brindley, and he talked at length about how much he likes Adam Fantilli and how good friends they are. And uh, obviously, in terms of Strathburn, they drafted two teammates from the Youngstown Phantoms as well. Yeah. I do feel like the Blue Jackets are going into this as like, we're going to build a team through the buddy system, uh, which is a lot of fun. Everyone's got to have a friend. So there you go. Yeah, I think, you know, the last couple of years in the draft for Columbus have been real good. And, uh, and it's laying the groundwork. And I just think like in this division, timing is everything. Like, how do you feel about Columbus's timing as far as what they're trying to put together here in the division? I think it, it, it could be better, but it also could be a lot worse. I think when you see kind of how other teams are doing, like Washington is only going to get older and slower as they've, they've flat out said, oh, we're not going to rebuild while Ovechkin is here or while Ovechkin is chasing the record. So like, they're just going to keep doing what they're doing and they're going to get older um, and they're not going to tear it down. Pittsburgh is also going to keep getting older, I think probably for at least a couple of seasons. Um, So really those two teams are kind of on the downward slope. The Islanders might be good this season. I'm not counting on it, but you know, it could happen. Um, And then you look at, Carolina, they're always good. The Flyers, obviously, are kind of start. That the Flyers are kind of where the Blue Jackets were two or three seasons ago, you know. So they they're probably a little ways away. Um, the teams are really kind of benchmark against. I feel like is New Jersey, who seem to have gone from being bad, terrible, to suddenly, oh, these guys could win the Metro, and like that's not a hot take. You know, that's a very good team. So. That they're on the upward trajectory. I feel like the Blue Jackets are on an upward trajectory. Um, the Flyers are kind of staying where they are, I think. Um, no one really knows what the Rangers are going to do. I feel like the Rangers don't really know what they're going to do. So, like, I feel pretty good about the timing because it feels like a lot of other Metro teams are kind of 
either on that downward slope or are about to start that downward slope. So I feel like the Blue Jackets, if they can, you know, I think the plan was this season to take a big jump in terms of rebuild. Obviously, they went out and they picked up Provorov, they picked up Damon Severson. Um, Obviously, Adam Fantilli is going to take things. um, That's going to give them a a jump. You know, I think they're less patient this year, which just to kind of go back to Adam Fantilli signing his, his entry level, I do think it is a little bit of impatience of they want the team to succeed. Um, and they want to, you know, I, I don't think it's Yama Kaklanen making moves to save his job, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's being aggressive because management's getting impatient. Um, but yeah, I feel like the timing is pretty good. It could be a little better. Um, I personally think that they may have rushed the rebuild a little bit, but if the Blue Jackets want to be competitive this season, like I'm excited about that. And I think it's probably a pretty good season to start being competitive in, you know, I'm not expecting them to win the cup this season but i i would like them to make the playoffs this season you know and it feels like that's that's the step forward and then the next year you win a round and then the year after that maybe you win a couple and you know uh, an upward trajectory like that i think is is good and as the other teams get older hopefully the blue jackets will just keep going will keep going up so my last question for for you hayden is um you do have mike babcock who's really not a developmental coach but he's going to have to help bring guys along. Now, Ken Johnson at least is one year into his career, and I think he could help him a lot, especially um, since his puck possession is so good in the corners. He probably could get him aligned more to get more points, and I think you'll see that. But you still have to bring Fantilli along, even though uh, there's a lot of things that he does. Like an nhl there's a lot of things that he still has to learn. Uh, he might get frustrated with the goaltending because uh, you know Elvis has not necessarily uh, been great. So what do you think about Babcock? Uh, this is an, a weird spot for him. It's a very weird spot for him, but it's also a team that has had – really they didn't have a coach the last couple of years. I don't think Brad Larson necessarily did a bad job for his first couple of years as coaching, but there was definitely some signs of, oh, this team has – no structure they have no just like they just have no fire underneath them as it felt like at times i feel like mike babcock is that guy immediately that's gonna resonate um just his hockey knowledge is just having that in the locker room is gonna be massive um i hope he's a different coach than what happened in toronto i think we're actually getting him at a really good time because he faced so much scrutiny from what happened in Toronto, it's very similar to when the Blue Jackets got uh, Torts. He had come off facing so much scrutiny. And I, I feel like we got a new and improved Torts in that way. So I'm really optimistic about the Mike Babcock that comes in. And I, I yeah, the stories about how he, you know, treated Marner back then is just, it, it's sad. And, and I, I don't like to think about it. I don't like to think about that kind of stuff happening to Adam Fantilli. But, oh man, I just, I hope that, if anything, he gets the team to play with just a little bit of structure because they certainly could use it. And then just pointing to the goalie, I think Elvis has had a couple of down years. I, I definitely think he has. But, you know, he's ours. And, you know, just like he's actually in a very similar situation as a guy like Carter Hart, I feel like. Like we, we saw a lot from him early on and then it's kind of fallen off. You're kind of just wishing that maybe some structure in front of him, some better defensemen will help put him in the right direction. And I just think um, of all the offseason acquisitions, Fantilli uh, in the draft, or in the we call them Pro, we call him Proverson in the trade. We we've grouped Damon Severson and Ivan Provorov into one guy. But of all the acquisitions the Blue Jackets made, I think the the biggest one that you're going to notice off the bat is Mike Babcock. I think he is going to get the team playing in the right way, and if they can just stay competitive to December and stay healthy to that point then I think they can make a playoff run. But all those things need to, all those things need to go right in those first couple months. It's going to be a very crucial start to the NHL season. And I'm very excited to be – I'm very excited for the matchup on uh, opening night, October 12th. I mean, Torts behind the bench for the Flyers playing in, you know, playing in Nationwide and Mike Babcock making his debut for the Blue Jackets. That is going to be an awesome night. And we'll probably have a, a lot of these questions answered by then or at least by the end of the game, one – but um, it's going to be a fun season for sure. And I think Mike Babcock is a huge reason why I'm excited as a Blue Jackets fan. Yeah, it's going to be a, a real cool opening to the season, I think, with our two teams facing each other. Uh, we will get into more just league-wide predictions and divisional questions answered coming up next.
Let's do a couple of uh, just kind of fun predictions. Um, we've kind of been asking these to all of the, the Metro hosts that we've done these crossovers with. Um, who's your pick for MVP for the Flyers? Uh, start with Rachel and then we'll go to Russ. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a tough question. I think, you know, if you're looking at it from just a pure points perspective and what's going on, I would say... Travis Konechny, but he might get dealt at the deadline. And so will that even matter at that point? I don't know. Um, I'm hoping, I'm sure hoping it's Sean Couturier and he's healthy and he comes back with a bang. I'll tell you that. Um, that would, I think, be the most ideal outcome is to have him be the the MVP of, of the team. I'm going to go Noah Cates. I think it's Noah Cates. I think he made a nice jump last year. If he's comfortable, uh, you might get more points out of him. But overall, I think that's what he's going to do, and I think Rachel's right. Like, Konechny could be gone, so he'll be there all year in a prominent spot. Yeah. Hey, what about you? Who's your Who's your pick for Blue Jackets MVP this season? Yeah, it's 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 kind of weird getting excited about this season, and and it's it's actually really nice to get excited about this season and not even think about Johnny Gaudreau. You know, <laughs> like he had a ninety point season last year. I, I hope he only goes up from there. I hope we see more of what we saw. With him and Matthew Kachuk, I hope Adam Fantilli. I hope he. I hope that connection is just reignited um, again, but basically in the form of Adam Fantilli, who has said that he models his game after Matthew Kachuk, which you know could have been a you know some a nice layup because he obviously got drafted by the Blue Jackets, and you know we got Johnny Gaudreau now. But if he a- anyway emulates Matthew Kachuk, then I believe Johnny Gaudreau is going to have a much better season. And again, he had a great season last year, but. He's listen, he's the star of the team. He's the heartbeat of the team, I believe. He changed the the blue he completely reset the Blue Jackets rebuild. Um so it's I'm putting it on him to be the team MVP because you saw what he can do when he get when he got the Flames to the playoffs. I mean, the guy's a game breaker and uh I want to see that happen in Columbus. Yeah. Goudreau would also be my pick for MVP, but I think to keep it interesting, I will make a different choice. Um I'm going to go Patrick Laine. Um if Patrick Laine is healthy and has real line mates this season and gets to keep those line mates for more than 45 minutes uh he could score 40 or 50 goals in this league you know um and he was looking real good last season he struggled with injuries uh struggled with inconsistent line mates and inconsistent ice time but he had 52 points in 55 games i believe um and yeah i think i i'm i'm Gonna go. I'm gonna go out on a limb and make a hot take, maybe. But I think Patrick Lyon is getting at least 30 goals this season, and I think he's definitely capable of getting 40 or 50. Um, so that's my my pick for for MVP for the Blue Jackets. Um, and then we'll finish off with with one. Um, normally we we start off by saying that you can't pick your own team for this, but I feel like with with this matchup, it's maybe not as much of an issue. Who's going <laughs> to win the Stanley Cup? <laughs> if you if you couldn't pick the Flyers, who who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup? Yeah, I don't think. When was the last time I actually picked the Flyers to <laughs> make it to the Stanley Cup? I honestly could not even tell you um, who that might have been. Um, geez, I, I, like I feel like this is more of an open season than it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like in division, I, I feel like the, the the Canes are on this precipice of maybe falling apart in a lot of ways, but I feel like they're still there. Like everything is there, but like if one little thing goes wrong, it could all fall apart. That's how I feel about the Canes right now. And, and the pens, like they're, they're doing the best they can and they're going to be at their ceiling of potential, which is good. Like, I don't think they're bad. I just think there is a ceiling of what they'll be able to do this season. I don't know if it'll be enough, but geez, Probably a a team out West. I'm going to go Colorado Avalanche. I I feel like uh, they, you know, with Landis Cog and everything, that was kind of a shock to the system. You always get that, all those injuries coming out, you know, cup win, and that always affects the year. And so I just feel like now uh, they have a good chance to sort of, you know, not even reboot. I mean, a lot of the same guys are there. You have Ranton in, you have McKinnon. Um, I think they're fine in, in goal with Georgiev. So I, I actually think this will be a really good year for them. And I feel like, yeah, they, they could, if you want to say surprise people, maybe it'll surprise a few. 
uh, but I don't think it would surprise a lot. Yeah, I feel like the 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 Avalanche are one of those teams where you think, oh, they've they've lost a couple of key pieces, and then they've got five more key pieces standing directly behind that. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're never. You know, you didn't even mention Kale McCarr, Bo Byram. No, like, I mean, there's all that. Yeah, the time and it's so frustrating. Yeah. Um, Hayden, how about you? Who's who's your pick to to win the cup? You're not allowed to pick the Blue Jackets, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, um, this is. To, I also had the Colorado Avalanche. I think with the Landis Cog injury, I think maybe a little bit of a Stanley Cup hangover last year for them. But their core is still intact. Their core is still young, um, and we know that in the NHL, we like the teams like to go back to the Stanley Cup, and they like to win multiple of them. And thank God this is a team in the West, not a team in the East, like we're used to dealing with. But I think I think for all the reasons Russ just said, another team I really like is the Kraken. I mean. Hell, they made some huge jumps last year, and getting to the playoffs was awesome. Um, I, I don't want them to win the Stanley Cup because I don't want another expansion franchise to win a Stanley Cup over the Blue Jackets, but that would mean more in my heart for them to win a cup than Vegas, just because of their hockey history. So yeah, I'm gonna, you know, just for the sake of changing it up, I'll go with the I'll go with the Kraken here. Yeah, I'm also gonna go with a team from the West. Um, <laughs> with, uh, as much as it pains me to admit it, um, Locked on Blue Jackets listeners will know my long feud with the Dallas Stars, uh, which has no basis in absolutely anything, but they're building a real good team out there in Dallas. Um, and they got better, I think. I think adding Duchesne mm-hmm. is, is a big a big boost for yeah. them. Um, Joe Pavelski refuses to age. Jason Robertson is a superstar. Like mm-hmm. they've, they've got all of the pieces. They've got maybe the best young goalie in the NHL right now in Jake Ottinger. Like, there's, there's a lot going on to like in Dallas, as much as it pains me to uh, pains me to admit it. Um, and I think that's kind of all we've got uh, right for right now. Um, like you said, the Flyers and the Blue Jackets are going to be facing off for the Blue Jackets home opener on October 12th, which is going to be real exciting. Uh, if people want to learn more about the Flyers, they want to catch up with some Cam Atkinson talk maybe, uh, where can people find you guys and your show, Rachel? We are all over social media at Locked On Flyers, wherever you want to find us. The app formerly known as Twitter. We're on Threads. We're on Blue Sky even. So uh, check us out wherever you are. Perfect. Uh, and you can find us over at LO underscore Blue Jackets, basically wherever you can get Locked On Flyers. We're over on uh, YouTube, obviously, every podcasting app of choice. We're not on Threads or Blue Sky because I refuse to learn how another social media works until, ah. this, one, <laughs> until this one leaves. Uh, but yeah, this was this was great. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. We'll have to yeah, do this a lot again. of fun. Yeah. Thank uh, you guys too. To the season starting. All right. Once again, thanks to the guys over at Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets. That was a fun conversation. Um, I probably. Uh, evaded the Stanley Cup question a little bit, but I think I think the Avs are are a good pick there. I'm not sure about the Kraken. Uh, I think the Dallas Stars are a long shot, but I think they would be the most fun team mm-hmm. to win the Stanley Cup. Like if you're going to pick the most fun kind of team to have a good Stanley Cup run, I think Dallas is a real good choice for that. Yeah, I think you waffled a little on it, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I think I just don't want somebody from the East to be that team. <laughs> right. And, uh, I don't want to jinx it by actually naming a team. Okay. So um that's that's where I'm at right now on Stanley Cup potential. But uh yeah, that'll that'll do it for today's show and for the week. We will be back on Monday with our nemesis of the week and a new summer poll. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a great weekend, everybody.